The lands here are the kind of beauty that doesn't ask to be seen. Endless and quiet. Perhaps it's just the winter chill. I guess nothing moves around much once the temperatures get into the negatives. But nevertheless, it made me feel like I was the first person to set foot on this earth. As if until now, it had gone unseen, unheard. The lands themselves holding on to a stillness that is yet to be broken. One English explorer arrived here in the 12th century, shortly after the reign of Genghis Khan. He wrote, The landscapes are composed of three things, heaven, earth, and tombs. I didn't see any tombs, but heaven and earth remained. Eagle hunting is an ancient art form that ties the Kazakh people to both the lands and the skies of Western Mongolia. And it's our longing to better understand this tradition that has brought us to this place. For years now, I've seen pictures and heard stories of the Kazakh eagle hunters. From what I've seen, they're a strong, thriving group of people, successfully keeping their traditions alive while embracing the changes of the modern world. But after our time in the Amazon, after learning about the struggles of the warriors who call it home, I was worried I may yet again be forced to face the fact that things aren't always as they seem. So, leaning on the side of optimism, we packed our bags for the cold and headed out in search of answers. Who are the Kazakh eagle hunters in Mongolia? And could their world possibly be as beautiful as it seems? The first eagle hunter we met was Basahan. But if he were to introduce himself, I think he'd do so as a simple herder. He was a big man, stern-faced, humble and quiet with the pressures of life pushing down on his brow. He stood tall, proud, and helped us better understand not only an eagle hunter's way of life, but all Kazakh herders who call Mongolia home. <laughs> I asked Basha Han why he lived here in Mongolia, if he was Kazakh, and his answer was simple. Kazakh means free warrior. He said that his ancestors were here long before borders, that they're nomads, steppe roamers, I later learned that Kazakh people started migrating to Mongolia in the 1800s, spending their summers in the high mountain pastures where their sheep could graze, then in the winters returning to Kazakhstan or Xinjiang province in China. A lot has changed since then, but many Kazakh people in Mongolia remain nomadic and live in traditional gurs during the summers, which are like these big, beautiful tents. They retain heat nicely, can be broken down easily, and are light enough for horses to carry long distances. And a few of the Kazakh herders, very few of them, still hold on to the tradition of eagle hunting.
Abashahan told us of an eagle hunter by the name of Esker, who is currently training his daughters to be eagle huntresses. He said that if we're going to tell the story of the Kazakh eagle hunters, it's important that we see how the knowledge is passed down from one generation to the next. So we headed north, into somehow even colder weather, and learned very quickly the challenges of eagle hunting. To become an eagle hunter, you need to first develop a bond with your eagle. It needs to know you, to trust you. Then there's your horse. Riding becomes much more difficult with a massive bird perched on your arm. You'll need to endure long distances, rough terrain, and temperatures well below zero. When training an eagle to hunt, there's a practice called shurga. One hunter climbs to the top of a high ridge with their eagle. The other attaches a rabbit skin to a rope and runs it across the ground below. The hunter with the eagle releases the tomaga. The eagle takes a minute to adjust, sees the rabbit, and from there, it's all instinct. As much credit as these young girls deserve, Kiran is the real huntress here. These golden eagles are natural born killers. With a wingspan of seven feet and weighing up to 15 pounds, they have the strength and the accuracy to take down and kill a full grown wolf. We ended up spending many days with Esker and his family. They were very kind, lighthearted, and seemed genuinely excited to not only share their home with us, but their way of life and love for eagles. Igerim and Igerk were adorable. When I asked them if they had a crush on any boys in town, they almost died of embarrassment. They were normal teenage girls, living out their normal teenage life, just quietly and very humbly being absolute badasses. And they didn't even know it. Sometimes I'd see Igram's love in a relationship with Kiran and start to see a pet. But I don't think Igram ever saw it like that. She saw her as wild and deserving of her respect. Before we left, Ikram spoke of an old Mongolian saying that further explained their love for eagle hunting. Joy is found in the wide open and empty spaces. And I couldn't help but think back to my conversation with Basha Han. Each morning we'd saddle up for a hunt. And the closer we got to the mountains, the more Basha Han seemed to come alive, laughing and smiling, filling the air with trail songs. By embracing and accepting their culture and traditions, the Mongolian people have not only allowed the Kazakh eagle hunters to thrive within, but become a part of their country. 
And even if it was only for a few weeks, they allowed me to do the same. Woven into the hearts of the people who live here is an ancient practice. A reverence for the eternal blue sky that seems to illustrate their respect for all life. Explain to me in pieces in broken English. Please don't take my translation too literally. But to acknowledge that the sky is above us is to see that we're all beneath it. It's to believe that we all live, grow, and die under the sky. Even lands crumble and fall. Therefore, everything should be treated and respected as equal. All people, all religion, all animals, all of the earth itself. Come on.